with my uh, running mate in the snow today, Spencer Tillman. And clearly, the turnover by Corey Dillon, his second fumble of the day, leads to the touchdown. And it was a controversial score. It was controversial score. You know, clearly the angles that we saw, the feet do get in bounds, but the ball does not pierce that mythical line that we talked about. And it's impressive because the official looked at it again, conclusive, although we thought it was, certainly decided to change the decision to give him the touchdown, a fortuitous call for that guy Tom Coughlin there in his Jaguar. Now, there's no doubt that these games and this win streak that's now at five still means a great deal to the Jacksonville Jaguars in preparation for that game on Saturday against the Giants on CBS. There you see the stat story in this game. You know, you look at Corey Dillon's numbers, they've been pretty impressive on the ground, but those turnovers, particularly the one after a 20-yard gain inside the 35, was key. Yeah, and the thing that jumps out, which is to look at every category, for the most part, pretty even. 61 yards rushing, 74 for Cincinnati on the other side. And you know what? That's competitive, but the bottom line is the turnovers will equalize every single contest like this. And that fortuitous call we have in the end zone on Jimmy Smith's touchdown may be the deciding factor of this contest because no team is totally dominating. All right, we talked about uh, this being the coldest day since the Freezer Bowl in 82 when the Chargers played the Bengals. This was the scene at 8.04 this morning after uh, three inches of snow had come down and we'd had freezing rain overnight. They began to uh, paint the boundaries of the inline and the sideline. This is at halftime. It's a steamroller, baby, right? And I'm not so <laughs> sure what that thing is doing. I mean, there's more dirt being kicked up, and the steamroller has gone past it, and there's still loose dirt yeah, behind and, and it. They're some, trying to pack it down. You know, in some measure, I think, given the status of this field prior to the inclement weather, they only made a difficult situation worse. Absolutely, because first of all, they didn't cover the field. Mistake number one, and because of the composition of this Bermuda grass, which doesn't grow well in this right. part of the country, that blue grass is better. It's loose, it's grainy, it's sandy. The seed does not grab hold like it would in normal conditions right that cost this uh this this crew in terms of preparing uh, and preparing and remember tom coughlin was asked the question earlier in the week in jacksonville he said look if i'm asked a question i'm going to tell you what i think i'm going to say it once yes this is a bad field i saw the tape because i was preparing my team for the cardinals i looked at that tape they had just played here two weeks ago and you know what it was bad we saw it was like quicksand coming up he could tell in the middle of the field and uh Mike Brown, or the president of the organization, shot back with one of those. Well, you know what? Uh, All Tell Stadium's field isn't in the best of shape <laughs> either uh, statement. So there has been a little back and forth. And I think given the circumstances today, uh, it becomes the central issue of this game if you're looking outside the line of scrimmage. And I think Tom Coughlin has a point well taken. And you know he's not one to mix words. This guy's a disciplinarian. He's going to tell you exactly the way he calls it. And he's absolutely right. Someone should be culpable for this field being in the condition that it is right now, Tim. Neil Rackers will kick it away. And Chiron Stith is back deep. He'll uh, try to gather this one in off the bounce, and he does. Chiron Stith, the rookie out of Virginia Tech, with a healthy return past the 40-yard line. It's a 21-yard return for him, and Jacksonville will have outstanding field position to open the second half for Fred Taylor. The incentives that we've touched on, he's just two yards away from an additional 500,000, that being the 1,300-yard plateau. That would be two yards, 72 inches, 1.8 meters, and you got a half a mil. Well, you got to know what your metric count is, you know. <laughs> got to be good with the math. Hey, either way you see it, I don't care if it's 150,000, 200,000, or 500,000. I'll take any of it. This guy has a laden lace contract, and he has taken full advantage of it and turned all of those incentives into likely to be earned. He certainly earned every one of them. Ball is on the Jacksonville 40, and it's a screen out to him as he tries to cut. He gets ahead for about three yards, maybe four, and that's all. Chris Carter makes the stop. You know, Fred Taylor's a great back, but that was a classic case like he did on the play where he was trying to cut back in the first half. He did a great job of setting the guy up and creating moves, but he tried to cut on his inside foot. He couldn't go back the other direction. Watch him get the guy in space, isolation. Nice job on the swing pass, stretching it. He turns, gets his shoulder square, gets the reception. Now watch the foot right there. See him try to cut back? He had the left foot on the right side and tried to cut across the grain. That's not good technique. It's what makes him special on good grass, but uh, not necessarily today. Carter comes up to clip him a couple of yards on the carry should be third down and uh, a long three maybe four coming up for jacksonville
By the way, uh, Tony Baselli, who's been beset with injuries, as you know, number 71, the left tackle, uh, walking gingerly on that ankle as they come up here on third down and three. Kyle Brady in motion. A little corner cat blitz. Brunel's pass is caught to Brady, who was in motion, and now he's uh, out of motion, but in Cincinnati territory at the 40-yard line. Mark Roman a, makes the stop. That's his sixth of the day. That was a great job. Watch, we're going to show you the pressure coming from the outside. They've got a blitz on, but Brunel dodges it. This guy was coming underneath 27, but he does a fine job of navigating pass, getting the ball to Brady, who gets it upfield for some positive yardage. So the ball now at the Cincinnati 40-yard line. McCardell is the receiver in the slot. Out of the eye. That's one of the two, perhaps. Now they knock him back. He may have not uh, gained a yard at all. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Michael Bankston as Fred Taylor. Well, you know, one thing you can't do as a running back, if you've got numbers sitting there, to be had, you can't give them back. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Well, I guarantee you, if Fred Taylor has an opportunity to get those yards, he's going to get them. That's one thing I like about Tom Coughlin. I've been in games before where guys like Mike Rozier that I played for, Heisman Trophy won a great guy, got close to some incentives, pulled him out of the game. Yeah. Brunel's pass, thrown a bit behind Brady, and then nearly picked off. That was Armija Spearman who almost claimed that one off the tip. Who had peeled back into pass coverage for Cincinnati. And what Brunel does is just put the ball on his back shoulder. You can see Brady not in the best position to catch that ball. And almost falls in the hands of the defender. Now here's the key here. Brunel puts it on a rope, but it's just a little bit behind him on that back shoulder. You know, the ball, many people don't realize that when you get in cold situation, the ball doesn't tend to travel as far for kickers and far as quarterbacks is concerned it does not throw as true in some situations third down and ten markers are down they'll wave this play off and uh, would that be we had uh, we were talking about Baselli a moment ago that he was walking gingerly I believe he's down right to the snap false start 71 offense yeah and five he's, yard penalty and, repeat third down and he's limping right now he, he wanted to limp off I don't know that uh, that they've got a replacement ready to bring in as yet, but you can see he's got uh, some trepidation. Well, he's a tough there. guy, Timmy, and he's coming off reconstruction surgery, the shortest turnaround uh, in NFL history. This guy came back after that total reconstruction of that ACL last year, and he's back in duty. He's obviously hurting right now. Not quite sure if it's the knee, but I wouldn't be surprised. Good enough to make uh, the Pro Bowl again, a fifth time for Tony Baselli. And was injured against the Bengals, the final week of the regular season when they were playing for home field in a game we had a year ago out of the shotgun Brunel with time looking long caught inside the 10 Jimmy Smith again and he did it in traffic too Tim you got a flag on the play however holding yeah it's gonna come back so that'll nullify a very big play biggest pass play of the day he used the hands Hands to the face, 78 offense, 10-yard penalty, remains third down. Todd Fordham, the guilty party, all 6'5", 308 pounds. He's still debating it a bit with Jeff Triplett. You know, Fordham's one of those big guys down there in the, in the toughest area to defend right here. The hands to the face, I believe, is... Watch the helmet come off right there, gentlemen. When you're down there in the trenches fighting for a position, trying to give the quarterback time right there, you occasionally will get the hand outside the pads, yep. but you get them to the face, they're going to catch that every time. So uh, Reynard Wilson's hat that uh, went to flying for the Bengals. Todd Fordham is, in fact, guilty. And a timeout taken by Cincinnati. Third down and uh, 25 coming up for Tom Coughlin's team when we return to Paul Brown Stadium. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman on third down and 25 for Jacksonville after a couple of very difficult penalties. Here comes pressure. Brunel trying to get away from it. Markers fly again, and the pass is incomplete. Brady did get one mid on it. 
at the sidelines and we'll have to check the flag. And yet another holding call, the preliminary indication. So Cincinnati with uh, a fourth down coming up. Holding 73 offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Well, let's see. They got uh, they got Smith and they got Fordham in that sequence after Smith had uh, caught a pass inside the 10 yard line. So it is fourth down as they decline the penalty. And Barker comes on to punt it away. Yeah, that's a couple of uh, penalties on Smith there at the center position. You know, and that's being a 4 3 defense, you're going to get a lot more activity over the head of the center than you normally would have. Usually the center's helping out either guard on either side. But when you got a guy over the top of you like he does right now in that old Dallas tilt alignment, you're going to have people all over you. Warwick is back deep, should be able to return it. It's a line drive punt. Look at that stop and start capability. Watch wow. out. This is what made him special in college. It will He's make gone. him special as a pro. Peter Warwick all the way for the touchdown. 82 yards. What made this special is with all the cuts and all the changes of direction, no penalty. On special teams, what happens, these guys have to maintain lane integrity. When you start to try to close on a guy like this, there's certainly going to be a void created. He goes all the way to the right side of the field, comes back, and, uh, you know, missed tackles here, the story of the contest so far on this particular play. You know, Neil Rackins, Rackers missing the play, several players. Mike Hollis, or rather Brian Barker, also missed tackles. He ran about 130 yards on that play. It was an 82-yard return, but when you take into consideration all the movements right and left, it was about 130 yards or more. Peter Warwick, dead gummit, Bobby Bowden would say. Tom Coughlin is saying it right now. We are tied in Cincinnati. Natural World, K Jewelers. This holiday season, shop K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And by Cellular One. When you need a cell phone, Cellular One is here. First punt return for a touchdown ever against Jacksonville. What makes it even more special, the kind of turf that Warwick just took off on. No question about it. I mean, this guy does a tremendous job of understanding what he's up against. He knows the conditions are very difficult. So when you've got a guy that runs back and forth across the field, he kind of reminds me of Webster Slaughter. Got tremendous body control, a great player. Here's the kick. Comes down to Stith again at his own 15-yard line. And Chiron Stith. And again, muscles it beyond the 40-yard line, and Jacksonville with quality field position. Again, from this angle, you can really sense the difficult track that he's having to do this on. And one of the things they coach is lane integrity. All these guys have lanes. The Jaguars, these men right here, have lane integrity. But what happens is you get so many of these players on this side of the field forward, and all of a sudden you've got them over there, and then here comes our guy back this direction. Watch it. You've got so many Jaguar guys on the left, right side of the field. He, it's a mismatch at this point, and then you've got a guy that's got tremendous body control. Again, he reminds me of Webster Slaughter, who had the ability to change direction. Nobody does it any better than this kid. Yeah, but you're saying that by keeping the feet close to the body, that's what makes the difference, right? That's, well, that's the, the key. That's yeah. the key. Your center of gravity. You keep your feet underneath your shoulders, as it were. The minute you start to try to cross over your body, you start to lose, because if you go one direction, you can't change totally yeah, we've, unless we've, you have balance. Yeah, we've seen that happen, as we told you earlier. First punt return for a touchdown in franchise history. Given up by Jacksonville. Brunel on first down. Gets the ball and penetrates Cincinnati field position inside the 50. And a late fumble. Cincinnati says they have it. Jimmy Smith caught it. And uh, no signal as yet from the officials. Now they give it. Cincinnati recovers. Artrell Hawkins was down there. As was uh, Michael Bankston, number 90. Clearly the ball is caught. And uh, wow. that's Roman that makes the tackle, knocks it free, and it's Mark Roman on top of it. He created the turnover and then uh, recovered it as well. 
Tim, that's a tough call right there. The knee to me looks like it's down. It's tough to tell right there as Williams is in front of the call. Yep. Well, boy, I tell you what, on that reverse angle, it sure looked like his knee was yeah, down. I think we have a challenge coming. There's a good chance of it. The problem is you only have so much time to make that decision. 30 seconds is it. Jacksonville has challenged the ruling on the field yep. that is a fumble. Yeah, that's uh, predictable on the part of Tom Coughlin, given the angle that we saw. Now again, the question is, how conclusive is the replay angle for Jeff Triplett to gather in here? Well, here's another angle, Tim. And it, it, the, the, the key here is taking a look at the big picture. If this call holds up, Cincinnati maintains the ball as Mark Roman right there on top of it. But, man, I'm telling you, it, it looks like the knee was down from the other angle that we saw a few minutes ago. It's all close to call. I think, from, I think from that angle, it appeared that the ball was already working its way free as he came down. Take a look at that again. Is it coming out there? Yeah, I believe that it really was. Although uh, you know, I was wrong earlier when my, at first glance uh, we had called a touchdown well, on the pass Williams, to Jimmy Smith. Well, Roman and Williams had their back to us, so it made it difficult to see. But again, looking at the big picture, though, if Cincinnati is able to hang on to the ball here, this takes a tremendous load off of Mitchell's shoulders because, number one, your special team steps up and scores for your defense gets your turnover. Mitchell is not the type of quarterback that can lead a team back after they're down early like they were in this contest. This is a tremendous opportunity for Cincinnati. Let's see if they can close the deal. You know, they're the worst passing offense in the entire league. I mean, to put that kind of pressure on your quarterback is very difficult. Add the adverse conditions, and it becomes a greater challenge. Uh, Dick LeBeau's team, number one rushing. And as you mentioned, last in, in passing efficiency from an offensive standpoint, this is very important. See, I think the ball is on its way out as the knee is touching. It's bang, bang. The ball is coming free well, as the knee as the knee approaches the turf. I think his arm is opening up, but I'm not so sure the ball is ajar at that point. Yep. You know, it's it's only natural to break your fall and to put the arm out there. I'm not so sure the ball is coming out at that point, well, however. In either situation, the point you're making is accurate. Cincinnati's the kind of team that you generally feel like if you jump on them early, get a lead, it's difficult for them to come back. And at the very least, Jacksonville had a very strong advantage in field position. If, if they had hold, held on to the football and if they don't you know, that cuts the field in half for the Bengals and they have advantage in field position let's face it on a day like today field position is that is really the catalyst one way or the other it's key I and mean, again we saw at halftime the, the little pulley and the tractor out here trying to save this field the middle of the field is where most of the activity has taken place and today is just indicative of the fact that no one's really been able to break any big play so any team that can get ahead in the scoring department is going to have a decided advantage at this point. In Cincinnati, you can just feel the momentum shifting, Tim. Well, that, by the way, is uh, Jeff Triplett. You see him talking to the headlinesman there. Uh, you know, we, we're well beyond the 90 seconds. Uh, you know, when you put the head under there and you're be beginning to look at the replays, they generally have a clock of a, a minute and a half in their heads before they make the decision. And... Uh, it's apparent to me that he's asking for an explanation from his head linesman uh, what what he saw what he witnessed and why the call was what the call was initially that's uh, Scott Dawson the head linesman that triplet is talking to and we're about to, ready to get the judgment now this is as close to 50 50 on two particular challenges this one could ever see after reviewing the play, the receiver's elbow was down, therefore down before the ball came out, therefore he is down by contact. It'll be second and one on the Cincinnati 48. Put 11, correction, put 10-41 back on the game clock. 10-4-1. Obviously it's Jacksonville's football. Now here's, interestingly by rule, if this had been called down by contact initially, it would not have been reviewable. Because it was not, then obviously they can make this reversal if they so choose, and now they did. And I think the point you were making is uh, 
is certainly the one that they went with. Well, it's only natural to put your arms out, even though you got a football in it to kind of break your fall. But, you know, actually what should happen in the way these receivers are coached is to actually bring the ball to your body and tuck and roll, not to stick your arm out there to break your fall. Well, uh, Tom Coughlin doesn't lose a timeout, does keep the ball, and it's second and one. Three-step drop, quick out, and it's Jimmy Smith for the first down. Chris Carter ushers him out at the 40-yard line. Uh, that was a very important call. We'll look back on that particular challenge as one of the real key moments in this game should Jacksonville score. Yeah, you got soft coverage out here on the outside, and, and you know what? I'll tell you what, uh, Artrell Hawkins slips down here. When you've got that kind of cushion, it's very difficult to close, and Smith did a fine job of taking advantage of the separation. Brunel, a good job of changing the play at the line of scrimmage and seeing the opportunity. First down, 10 at the 35-yard line, they say now. And that pass is caught inside the 30-yard line. Again, it's Jimmy Smith working on Artrell Hawkins, who uh, was in the starting lineup, lost his starting job. He had been burned a couple of times. Tom Carter had come in for him, and now... Uh, back into three. duty today. Brunel is on to something here. Watch this. This is Archer Hawkins out here. Look at this. This is at least a 10 or 12 yard cushion. When this guy comes up here, it's tough to close on a guy that's got the ball in space. You've got the challenge to deal with the elements like he does. I don't like my chances going to find a receiver like that. Three straight catches for Jimmy Smith. Now it's Taylor well beyond the 1300 yard plateau. And uh, penetrating the 25-yard line down to the 21. So uh, even if he had a few uh, carries for losses, he would uh, be counting the cha-ching, cha-chings. Like those incentive clauses built into modern-day NFL football. He might have to change his name. First name Cha, last name Ching. <laughs> cha -ching. 1,308 yards for the season for Taylor. And that's, uh, you add to that the fact that he missed three games. That's impressive. Trying to bounce outside again. Now a little Corey Dillon move. Coming back the other way. Foley had him and lost him. And finally he's run down. Uh, Spearman finally drags him down at the 25-yard line. A loss of two on the play. Well, Tim, in the fine art of investment, you never give money back. <laughs> you never give money back. You know, you got those incentive losses. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful? Let's say, for example, Cincinnati shuts him down the rest of the night and he loses it on that negative game. Next week, he's got a pretty tough defense yeah. he's facing in the Giants. You know, John Fox's crew is not going to give up too many yards. Jimmy Smith, the wide receiver coming to the top of your screen with the ball at the Cincinnati 25. <laughs> Pressure on the blitz to Keo Spikes. And a clear shot at Mark Brunel. And he's back to the 35-yard line. A loss of 10. Keo Spike, the wide-eyed enthusiast on that defense right here. You know, he's going to come from the corner. Watch him. Brunel's going to try to set him up, but he's not going to fall for it. Try to fake him out, but no, he stays low, gets his feet underneath him, understanding the conditions, and pulls Brunel down to the field. Tremendous job. A forward progress uh, back at the 32-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Well, Spikes uh, by far and away the leading tackler. Third down and 21 for Jacksonville. Here comes a safety blitz. Brunel reads it and tucks it. And out of bounds at the 30, just shy of the 30-yard line. Corey Hall coming the strong safety. 51 sacks this year, but they've been limited uh, of late during this run and uh, you know Brunel made mention to us yesterday when we spoke he said you know I'm staying in the pocket more because I'm getting more time than I did earlier in the year well either way you look at it it could be a disadvantage or advantage I mean 51 sacks folks that's quite a few times to be under pressure the good side is he's seen it before the bad side is you know what you subject yourself to a lot of potential injury being sacked 51 times well, he, he told us all he needs is 10 seconds 10 seconds and he's in great shape Parker with a high pooch punt Fair catch called for and fumbled by Warwick at the 10. Jacksonville's got it. Just outside the 10-yard line. And for Peter Warwick, uh, 
the good, the bad, and the ugly of special teams. Danny Clark, number 55, recovered the fumble. Reserve linebacker. Well, you know, he's the type of guy, he's got the ball underneath him, does a fine job of looking at it, just took his eyes off at the last second, it looked like. Makes a great play to put his team in position to go up and then make an equally as disappointing play. Peter Ward. I tell you what, with the wind gusts that we have that have been better than 35 to 40 miles per hour today, the pooch punt. Give Barker some credit. You get that ball high into the air as he did. That made it a more difficult judgment for Ward. No question. Came in. You get the ball oblong up there in that air, and I'm telling you, it'll knuckle the ball on you in a hurry. That was just an 18-yard boot, but it uh, certainly was important. Here's Taylor. Perhaps a yard, and that's all. Glenn Steele, number 70, three years out of Michigan, made the stop. This is just, let's face it, one of those days where field position turnovers, very, very important in this game. The return by Warwick of 82 yards, giving Cincinnati their only score. They have not been inside the Jacksonville 35-yard line all day. Well, just ask Tom Coughlin if turnovers matter. The first half of the season, they averaged three turnovers a game. The second half, less than one a game. They had a lot of injuries, but turnovers contributed to most of those losses. They can get a first down without benefit of the touchdown. Here's Taylor. Runs into Javon Langford at the five-yard line. And a little help from Armija Spearman as well. You talk about Timmy in these conditions when teams are able to get in the end zone they truly do earn it because once you get inside that 20 yard line the field is reduced it becomes easier to cover defenders you don't have as much territory to fit behind you so if you're running it or receiving it you're earning it big time. That first orange line of course is uh, the point of uh, the end zone cross it and it's uh, six Third down and four a yard shy of that it would be a first down for the Jaguars. Taylor touchdown and they made it look easy and Peter Warwick having to deal with the downside of being on special teams after an 82 yard punt return for a touchdown it's his fumble that leads to six for Fred Taylor well Warwick the hero and the goat in the less than a minute span opens up the door for Fred Taylor six consecutive game with the touchdown this guy is about as good as it gets. 78 yards on the day 22 carries for him and here's Mike Hollis for the extra point this guy's had a whale of a year two lower back surgeries and he's only missed one field goal try all season Jacksonville reclaims the lead in Cincinnati thanks to Frederick the great 14 to 7 Fred Taylor uh, getting a, a brief rest and a chance to warm up as Jim Tarl boots it away, Mack was deep, but this one would go out of bounds in front of Damon Griffin. Kickoff out of bounds, kicking team. The ball will be placed 30 yards from the spot of the kick. First down. Good field position for the Bengals when we come back. They're down seven here in their home finale. Did by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken. A cold, blustery day here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Wind chill at uh, 30 below. And the Bengals trail by seven. Nothing doing on this uh, carry for Corey Dillon. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Friday on CBS, the first witnesses to this murder aren't human. Can these insects help solve the crime? You have to see it to believe it. Check out an all-new CSI crime scene investigation. That's Friday on CBS. I'm watching. Second down and 10. I think I will, too. It's... You're sort of a father-knows-best type. I know you'll have some free time. That pass is picked off. And it's Logan, Mike Logan, the nickelback. And he returns it inside the 40 to the 35-yard line of Cincinnati. So what has beset uh, Scott Mitchell through much of his career since that awesome 95 season in Detroit 
hits him again here. Well, we said that, you know, he's not the type of guy to bring a team back from behind. It's evident it showed on that particular play a bad, ill advised call and decision. More on it after this play. Quick out, Jimmy Smith. Almost the football. Cincinnati says they have it. And we'll wait for the headlinesman. And uh, it is given to them. Mark Roman, who created a near turnover earlier, gets one this time. And uh, a raging debate from Mark Brunel along the sidelines as to whether he was in or out of bounds. Well, it's an unfortunate situation. Cornell does a good job of getting the ball to receive, but again, you've got faced up. you got to protect that ball. Bring it into your body. Wrap it up with the three points of pressure in the top, the end, and around your ribs. And Jimmy Smith uh, right there. And did he have possession inbounds? Apparently so, say the officials. At the 31-yard line, Cincinnati will have it first and 10. Roman had the clear shot at it, and again, he did a great job of heading up his guy and then stripping the ball yeah, afterwards. Tremendous job. And the ball was inbound, and now we're going to get a late challenge. One would think. One would think this is all about a late challenge coming from Tom Coughlin. He practically run to the hash mark. And uh, he gets the attention of Jeff Triplett. This would be third time we've gone to replay. Jacksonville has challenged the ruling on the field and, is a and recovery by Cincinnati. If this one goes against the Bengals and there are two challenges one that will make a lot of people here very unhappy. But well, does a fine job of fronting the guy up but Mark Roman does a great job of keeping his hands separated away from the guy forcing him out of bounds getting the ball out punching it out and it stays in fortunately for him for an opportunity to recover it he's in great tackling position you see where that left hand is right on the numbers and then does a great job of breaking that ball out of there then the presence of mind to see that it's on the ground in the field of play for the recovery uh, I don't know how you cannot rule this a recovery I think the first replay we had was the best angle well Brunel he certainly weighing in on the decision but the bottom line is he's not in a position to make the call from there he expected to make that kind of well, fellas I, I really believe that this one this one really should go Cincinnati's way the first angle that we showed you was uh, I think in my mind definitive enough that you cannot overturn uh, the call itself and that is uh, where remember where the ball is he has possession and possession is inside that orange line or even on the line take a look the ball is nestled right there on the hip pad. I don't know that that would be conclusive enough to say that the call does not stand. Well, his shoulder was on that line, Tim. Yeah, but look where the ball well. is. Look where the ball is. Possession of the ball in the field of play. And again, again, we were talking about splitting hairs uh, as we were earlier on the touchdown call with Jimmy Smith. But uh, again, it comes down to the subjective opinion of the official. Uh, Jimmy Smith is clearly the star of the replay booth today. Both as a, <laughs> He's been involved in both controversial that's right. calls, hasn't he? Well, you know what? I, like you said, thank goodness they decided to eventually paint these lines on here once they came up <laughs> yeah. with the idea that it was not going to work, trying to blow it off. They did this early this morning. You see that orange paint. They're trying to cover up a problem that should have been alleviated by covering the field. We wouldn't even have this issue. But somewhere along the line, as I queried some of the groundskeepers, they really didn't know why they didn't do it. Uh, I would be really surprised if uh, the Jaguars did not file an official complaint with the NFL office relative to there not being a tarp put on the field overnight. I well, think they've got a great case, and it could be that the NFL itself uh, could file a complaint, a grievance with, uh, with Mike Brown. There could even be a possibility, one would think, of uh, some sort of fine. That's right. Each team certainly has certain latitudes being members of the NFL, but they certainly are under scrutiny of league-wide rules, and they've got to conform to those rules. And I've got to think that adhering to, I guess, how your, your field is set up has got to be a major part of that. Well, this field was not in good shape. If you have a tarp available and the forecast is calling for freezing rain and snow, uh, one would think that uh, it's in the best interest of all the players and their health that that tarp be put out but well, one of the guys told me the reason they didn't put the tarp out which by the way only covers three quarters of the field well, you're talking about members of the grounds crew absolutely right? members of the grounds crew told me that they had painted the field and it was still wet 
So if they would have put the tarp over it, it would not have dried. But again, that's a poor excuse because it totally ignores the weather forecast. Well, this is the second time that we've gone well beyond the 90 seconds uh, that is prescribed uh, for use of replay. But again, in these conditions, I guess one would have to think that maybe he needs to see it uh, for a longer period of time. Apparently, Jeff Triplett has seen enough and is going to, to make the call now. Everything's gone Jacksonville's way with regard to replays today. After reviewing the play, the, C the Cincinnati player did not recover the ball before his helmet and shoulder was touching out of bounds. Yep. Therefore, it, the ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds from the 35-yard line. Uh, It'll be second down at, at nine at the 35. The game clock is correct at 4.04. Jacksonville is not charged a timeout. Wow. Well, this is what happens to teams that have losing records year <laughs> after year after year. Well, another holiday gift. And yes. that was the thing that we were talking about. I wasn't quite sure if the shoulders in the head, again, we're not on that orange no. line. And right. it's a... And possession, again, my point was where the ball was possessed was inbounds, just as, in my opinion, where the ball was located when Jimmy Smith caught it was not in the end zone when we looked at that uh, that touchdown a bit earlier in time. Yeah, but what do you say? It's the hard luck Bengals, Tim. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, poor, poor Dick LeBeau, you've got to feel for him. Every challenge that Coughlin's made has gone his way. And then the touchdown, which was debatable, uh, went his way, and they reviewed that because we were inside the two-minute mark. Here's Taylor. Greg Taylor ahead for five, nine, and the fumble again. Cincinnati says they have it. And the Jaguars indicate that they've got it. And the officials are going to award the ball to Jacksonville, it appears. Well, no matter who has it, Timmy, I guarantee you there are some bodies flying around there. Now, there's some anger now with the Cincinnati defense. Meester, Brad Meester, the offensive guard on the left side, was on top of it for the recovery after Taylor had lost it, shy of the 30-yard line. Well, you look at Fred Taylor and a little ISO play off the left tackle. Nice job of sifting through there. One guy goes low. Here comes another guy up top. Look at the shot on the helmet there. That's Arturo Hawkins. Does a fine job of putting his helmet hat to hat, jarring the ball loose. Third down and six. And that should be a violation with a play clock. Pass is caught by Smith at the 20-yard line. And uh, I don't see a flag as yet, although maybe we do get a late one. Yes, it is. Uh, that's clearly a, a violation of the play clock. The lamb game. Five-yard penalty remains third down. There was a good count or so after the uh, play clock had uh, hit zero before Brunel got that. Well, you know, one of the things that you're going to, again, Brunel is aware of this. 51 times we pointed out a moment ago, he's going to be under pressure. You've got an inside blitz coming underneath. Brunel hit again. He's comfortable with that situation back there, although he would not like it. Tremaine Mack does a great job of coming from the safety position, putting a hat on number eight. Third down 11 now after the uh, delay of game penalty. The ball at the 35 yard line of Cincinnati. More pressure up the middle from Wilson. It's batted down. Corey Hall was also coming from strong safety to bat that one down with his mitt. For an update, let's go to New York and Jim Nance. Timmy B, thank you. Kansas City has taken the lead on the Denver Broncos. Rookie Frank Moreau, two yards out. Big game for the Broncos, but they're down three with two minutes to play third quarter. Let's go back to Tim and Spencer. You're right you are, Jim Nance. No question, uh, Denver with hopes of playing more games at home than on the road in the playoffs. A very meaningful game for them, particularly given the loss by Oakland yesterday. Here's the punt by Parker. And it's uh, out of bounds near the 10 yard line. That's where Cincinnati will have it first and 10. You know, we talk about the conditions all the time, and the quarterback, even though he's sitting back there in the pocket, is not exempt from having problems with the footing. You know, a tremendous job. Corey Hall in there creating pressure. Brunel trying to get it away. 
And that was a coverage right there, pressure. The corners were up in press coverage on the outside. That's why Brunel had to take his time and get a second look and try to find someone open. So the Bengals with a first down outside their 10 yard line. Dillon burrows ahead for about three to near the 15 yard line. Grant Boyer and a linebacker makes the stop. Tonight on 60 Minutes, if you love the people Tom Hanks plays in the movies, wait until you see him playing himself. An early Christmas present from 60 Minutes tonight. And we've had a few uh, Christmas presents today by virtue of turnovers. Peter Warwick uh, committing one, Corey Dillon another. That led to Jacksonville's two touchdowns. Warwick's 82-yard punt return. Good for Cincinnati's and Nick Williams on the receiving end of this pass. Donovan Darius runs down the big 260 pound two year man out of Miami, but not before he has a first down. That's a basic little bootleg coming out here. Nice job of selling the front side. Mitchell pulling it back in. Great job. Lost everybody on that particular play. Got it to Williams, who gets upfield for great positive action. Now watch the play action. Mitchell, great job sticking that ball out there. He's one of the great quarterbacks in the league, I believe, at that particular play. Not a great quarterback, but when selling that play action, none do it better than he does. Steps up. Ball is tipped into the air and incomplete. Now that quick release. Remember, he spent some time in Miami with Dan Marino. Known for his ability to get rid of the ball quickly. Joel Smangy tipped that one into the air to cause the incompletion for Jacksonville. Mitchell now 5 of 13 for 78 yards and one interception. That interception important. Leading to a touchdown for the Jaguars. You know, he's in better shape, too. Uh, Scott Mitchell right now than I recall him being in during the latter stages in Detroit. Popping free again is Dillon. And that's another first down. Past the 35 near the 38 yard line. Donovan Darius hauls him down after a 12 yard game. You know, good isolation blocking up front here. The little draw, you know, we talked about again before the game, draws do a great job against pressure teams. You got a front uh, offensive line that is going to block like that. Graham up front. Uh, Willie Anderson, all those guys pushing the pile up front, do a tremendous job of giving Corey Dillon an opportunity to run. By the way, uh, New Orleans is looking good playoff-wise. You see the offensive impact. Almost 40% of that Cincinnati offense attributed to Corey Dillon. Here's Bennett into the game, Brandon Bennett. He'll be run out by Logan, maybe a yard or two behind the line of scrimmage. We were looking at some scores a moment ago. You saw New Orleans with that lead. Detroit is trailing right now, so if uh, Detroit loses today or if Tampa Bay loses tomorrow, and a Saints victory would put them in the playoffs regardless of what happens next week against the Rams. That's the end of the third quarter. 14-7 our score. Back after this message and a word from your local station. The Jaguars looking for their sixth consecutive win, leading the Cincinnati Bengals. Trying to get their fourth victory of the season. 3-11 coming in. The Jaguars 7-7 seven seven, looking for a winning season and uh, closing out their year with the opportunity of seven consecutive victories. And Scott Mitchell was under center and quick movement. The preliminary indication is that it could be procedure against the Bengals. John Jackson may have moved prematurely. False start. 65 offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second. Remain second down. John Jackson, a native of this uh, area here in Cincinnati. You look at the running back comparison. We talked about how important they were. Only 10 yards separates the two. But for Dillon, three of his carries have netted 48 yards. And uh, he's been a big play running back all year. Ball may have been tipped a bit. Deflected somewhat at the line of scrimmage. Williams was the intended receiver. Either that or it simply got away from Scott Mitchell, one or the other. Very poorly thrown in the dirt and uh, sets up a third and long now for the Bengals. A moment ago, you saw Fred Taylor stretching out over there. As you might imagine, these cold temperatures, that old hamstring does tend to tighten up a little bit on you, so you got to stay fle pretty flexible, drink quite a bit of water. Looking for their third, third down conversion of the day, the Bengals. Mitchell trying to step up in the pocket. Late flag as he's dropped. 
by Seth Payne. Defensive tackle, and we'll check the flag. There is no flag on the. There is no foul on the play for an offensive hold as the man made the tackle for a sack. So Daniel Pope will come in to punt it away, and there was pressure coming. And Scott wanted to step up and find someone on the crossing pattern, just had no time. Well, you know, Mitchell, part of it is is that great coverage on that secondary for the Jaguars. He's trying to sift his way and find it through there. A lot of traffic up there. Seth Payne does a great job of grabbing the ankle and pulling him down. Bengals first punt of the half. Pope gets it away. Tight spiral coming to Barlow at his 30. Oh. Fumble. Cincinnati has it. Billy Granville on top of it for the Bengals. Reserve middle linebacker. So both Peter Warwick and Reggie Barlow have coughed it up. The well, Jaguars keeping them in this one right here. Get look wrapped at, it. Look at this. We have a marker down, and it could be procedure against the Bengals. Illegal formation. Wow. Uh, Offense. Number 86 was not up on the line of scrimmage. Dead ball. Therefore, the offense only had six men on the line. Oh, man. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> Repeat, fourth down. Did you, now, you see it. That's four calls, he said, that have gone against us. Four critical plays, Dick LeBeau is saying, have gone against us. How many more can we have during the course of a day to have a chance to win this game? I think the frustration again when you're three and 11, seemingly none of the opportunities come your way. Well, you know, you have to look at the guys and see who's there. You have to have a certain amount of men on the line of scrimmage. You got one here, two, three, four, five here. One of these up backs needs to be up. That guy needs to be up in that alignment right there to qualify. You've got too many back there. The up back is in his position where he's supposed to be. He's the personal pr protector, the PP. But if you don't have enough men on line of scrimmage, and they may have called it because of this right here. Mm -hmm. Look at them. They're kind of peeled off the line of scrimmage there, Tim. Now a low snap from center. He does get the boot away. And a fair catch called for. And again, Jacksonville comes away with decent field position at the 38-yard line and some late movement. And now a little extracurricular activity after the 38-yard boot. And again, the frustration really setting in for LeBeau and company. Seemingly unable to get any break today. For cornerbacks in the league when he was with the Lions, played on the national championship team with Woody Hayes. He's seen great teams at Pittsburgh when he was on that staff, and he's also been part of uh, some poor teams with losing records. And uh, Fred Taylor forges ahead for seven, maybe eight yards. And unfortunately, that's... Uh, always been the story anytime with teams that have long droughts and uh, none have been longer seemingly playoff wise for this team the leak 10 years then seven years for the saints the bears the chargers the panthers when you have those kinds of droughts you get those kinds of calls and you know and futility is, is is contagious as well timmy yeah you know that's when your fans start saying when, when circumstances like that occur, as Taylor is stopped uh, near the line of scrimmage by Darrell Williams, you know, your fan base begins to say, that's why we're the Bengals. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the most devastating part of it when you're a coach or a player on a team. Your fan base begins to say, well, you know, if we weren't this bad, we would get more breaks. Like I said, you know, if utility is contagious, too. It's very difficult for the players, the coaches, the administration to get excited about something when... Losing has become the, the order of the day. I mean, the fans certainly have felt that way over the last 10 years, and we just illustrated with the graphic. 10 years without a playoff appearance. On third and two, Smith, right in front of Artrell Hawkins, has the first down for Jacksonville. For an NFL update, let's go to New York and Jim Nance. It's Doug Flutie time for the Buffalo Bills with Rob Johnson out with a concussion. A Flutie 32-yard scramble sets up the touchdown pass then to Sheldon Jackson, and the snow is coming down sideways in Buffalo. They got it worse than you do right now. Let's go back to Tim and Spencer. That's right, Jim. Ours is coming down just uh, directly from the sky, not as much side to side. Uh, Buffalo, again, another story of what might have been for them this year. Yeah, opportunity loss in Buffalo. I mean, they had their chances. They had some quarterback controversial issues yeah. to deal with. 
nothing that they couldn't overcome. Fred Taylor hopping free. And again, the uh, ebb and flow of the game and the breaks of the game, you begin to wonder how long the Cincinnati defense will hold up. That's a gain of almost uh, nine, maybe more, just a yard shy of a first down. Fred Taylor coming right at you. has had his best success today when he's gotten vertical and gotten up the field like he does here in the nice play. Wrapping up, you notice he's taking care of the ball now, don't you, Timmy? Mm-hmm. And that's his ninth consecutive 100-yard game. That puts him in the rarefied air of Walter Payton. Uh, it has been oh so sweet the last nine weeks for Fred Taylor. Boy, he is a class act, a talented guy that quietly goes about his business. Didn't have the fat contract, but it certainly lived up. Yes. All those incentives. Now the wallet getting a bit more bulky as of today's play. There you see the all-time Fred Taylor has now moved up. It's now nine. Tying Walter Payton, our own Marcus Allen of CBS Sports, has 11, and Barry Sanders, 14 of them First in his career in succession. All the San Diego clinging to a lead against the Carolina Panthers, a team that's been uh, hovered around the 8-8, eight and 7-9 eight, and nine mark for some time. Had a chance for the playoffs last year, but lost to Pittsburgh the final week of the year. Marker comes down. Takeo Spikes makes the stop on Fred Taylor after a gain of about a yard. Looks like it's a hold. That's the preliminary indication. Holding offense. 73. Ten-yard penalty. Remains first down. So it goes against uh, Jacksonville offensive line. So one of the things that Tom Coughlin talked to us about yesterday was the mixing and matching of his offensive line. He said, you know, I had two guys, a part of my offensive line at midseason, that were not in training camp with me. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why he had to understand what the situation with his team was when he had a, a team meeting around midseason with some select members of the squad. And he was quite candid about that. You recall him saying, look, I don't do my best work when we're handcuffed with injuries and the like. Yep. He certainly had to deal with a great deal of that in the early go. Timeout taken by Jacksonville. 10-24 remaining. Jacksonville leads by a touchdown. Is sponsored by Staples. Staples has everything you need for your business at guaranteed low prices. Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. And by Dell. Fans are in sync here in Cincinnati as the Bengals taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars after the timeout. Everyone bundled up in Bengal land, hoping that their team can uh, find its way to victory for the fourth time of the season. Jaguars have controlled the football this half. 24 plays to nine. Chiron Stiff is in the game, and he takes the handoff and is ahead for three or maybe four yards on the play. Michael Bankston makes the stop. Monday on CBS, a night of Christmas comedy begins with the King of Queens, followed by the new comedy hit, Yes, Dear. Then don't miss Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond, followed by Becker, starring Ted Danson, and Monday's number one drama, Family Law. It's all here Monday on CBS. Fred Taylor's checked back into the game on second and 18. He's the lone setback. is caught in a nice move by McCardell afterwards. Down at the 24-yard line. Should be a first down, or at least very close. An 18-yard pickup. At first glance, it does appear to be enough. Again, they're getting a heavy dose of soft coverage out there. McCardell, Mark Roman, too much cushion out there on the corner for him. McCardell does a fine job of trying to make some positive yardage after he gets upfield. All kind of bodies around them in that zone coverage. They're dangerous out there. All these young corners, and certainly Roman, uh, one of the youngest, getting a test today against two of the top wide receivers in the National Football League. Brady in motion. Not much room for Taylor, but then again, he doesn't need that much to pop free. Stopped by Oliver Gibson, number 99. 
wanted to go back for a moment to that conversation you and I had with uh, Tom Coughlin yesterday, known as a disciplinarian. In the midst of that two and six start, uh, there were some rumblings, at least from the media, some of the fans perhaps, about uh, the way he goes about his business. Of course, uh, he's been so successful, but when you're a two and six, uh, the rumbling will always begin. Players were certainly supportive of him when we chatted about that today, and he, yesterday he was very honest about it when we spoke to him. Brunel forwards himself the time, and the pass is caught by McCardell, and it could be another first down. You know, the key, though, though Darrell Williams did the great job of pressuring him, and that's a timing route here. As, as uh, Brunel rolls out of the pocket, that should have been a seven-step ball release Timing passing, but caught, but because of Williams pressing him out of the pocket there, he made it difficult and screwed up the timing. Well, he's about a yard shy of a first down, less than a yard shy. So third down coming up for Jacksonville. It's not often when you hear a coach of uh, the ilk of uh, Tom Coughlin say, you know what, I learned something about my profession in the midst of the two and six start. But that's what he admitted to us yesterday. Here's Taylor ahead. Should be enough for the first down. And when we quiz the players about it uh, and that was during the time in which uh, we were talking with uh, a number of the guys that would have been a part of that meeting that Tom mentioned they were all very supportive of the decisions that uh, Tom had made with regard to where his team really was uh, forgetting the fact that they were 15 and 3 and in the AFC championship game a year ago well this team came in last year with a tremendous amount of uh, advanced billing at 14 and 2 a lot was expected of this ball club and when the injuries hit him in the preseason Timmy Tom Coughlin was in a tough pickle he hadn't been in a situation where he's had to coach with so many injuries he is a disciplinarian a tough guy knows how to get it done when he's got the tools he quite pointedly admitted I'm not the best when I don't have the players that can play Taylor uh, gets ahead to near the 10 yard line. Tom Barnes makes the stop. We'll call it a pickup of two. Second and eight coming up. <laughs> just, it is, uh, I, we cannot underscore any further just how awful this turf really is. Yeah, I mean, it's loose as it is, and they try to come down and pack it down, but when you get those big old hogs up there, guys, 292 pounds, just trouncing all over the place, you can forget about See, trying I, to keep that intact. I know you're from Oklahoma. I'm from Louisiana. We've seen our fair share of cow pastures, <laughs> and uh, that's what that resembles. <laughs> Taylor, again, uh, not much, if anything. We'll call it stopped at the line of scrimmage. Oliver Gibson made the stop. Well, Detroit did score off of fumble recovery so uh, the Lions trying to keep pace with uh, the New Orleans Saints uh, in their race for the playoffs and remember if it were a tiebreaker between Detroit and New Orleans Detroit would win that uh, that tiebreaker but as for the Saints their lead over Atlanta in the fourth appears to be a good one they uh, they need some help could get it from Tampa Bay were they to lose tomorrow uh, then the Saints would be in but again uh, that head-to-head -head matchup with the Rams next week could be for the NFC Western Division title. And again, keeping the ball in the middle of the field, a conservative call to set up for the field goal try with Mike Hollis. And uh, that would give them a two-score lead with just over five minutes to play. Log on to NFL.com and vote for what you think were the greatest playoff games of all time. It's all at NFL.com. Mike Hollis has missed one field goal in 24 tries this year 23 of 24 and were it not for the the back surgery he had earlier in the year that caused him to miss some games he might likely be all pro and headed to Honolulu at the end of the year rather than Matt Stover you know Hollis has had a great postseason in adverse weather back in 96 he had eight field goals in a couple of playoff games this will be from 28 yards and he slips and the surface had everything to do with it. He could not, and you know, before the game, I went down and, and walked hash mark to hash mark, and that was the one thing I mentioned. I said, I can't imagine anyone being able to make a field goal today. Chalk that one up to the cow pasture, his second miss of the season. Company uh, have to feel badly about that opportunity. Could have, uh, for all intents and purposes, sewn up this one. Here's Warwick coming on the reverse. And uh, not much for him. You know he would like to make a big play after that fumble that led to the 
second touchdown for Jacksonville. Tonight on 60 Minutes, if you love the people Tom Hanks plays in the movies, wait until you see him playing himself. An early Christmas present from 60 Minutes. That's tonight, followed by an all-new episode of Touch by an Angel, then Emmy Award winners Richard Thomas and Bo Bridges star in the heartwarming new holiday movie, The Christmas Secret. It's all here. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. Second and nine. Hardy coming on the blitz. It's picked up. And the pass is tipped into the air and incomplete. Warwick, the intended receiver, pass thrown a bit high. When that happens sometimes, it leads to a deflect, deflected pass and an interception. We do have a marker down in the Bengals' backfield. An area thrown usually means holding. Holding, 71 offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. That's Willie Anderson, who we touched on earlier, one of the bright uh, top picks in the decade of the 90s. Young man out of Auburn, a great run blocker, and very rarely gives up a sack. He's been bothered by ankle problems coming in. Well, Willis just backing up here, base pass protection, but he gets that arm outside the shoulder pad, but then he goes to the takedown. He knows he loses the guy on the shoulder, the perimeter, and then grabs him a little bit too obvious there. Yeah, and again, you could see that uh, that ankle sprain was giving him a problem there with traction. Second and long. Time running out. Pass is caught and will be ruled out of bounds. Peter Warwick does not have both feet in. And it's incomplete. Well, every, every line judgment has gone against Cincinnati today. This is yet another example. Well, I agree with you, Tim. Peter Ward would like nothing better than to make amends. Nice job of getting separation. Nice little push off there. That's great. That's savvy for a youngster. Yeah. Good nice call, job of uh, tight roping and keeping his feet inbound for the reception. It's ruled incomplete. Did not That drag foot did uh, hit the orange boundary, so it is incomplete. That was a good call by the officials. Yeah. Third down and 19. A pump fake. Farmer, he's got it at the midfield strike. Just shy of it for the first down. Biggest pass play of the day for Scott Mitchell. 37 yards on the completion. And Farmer just uh, out fought the defender, Fernando Bryan and Renee Stewart. Yeah, Stewart and, and Brian were back there and really should have had what they call banjo coverage, a guy on either side of him, but he goes up and climbs the ladder, makes a tremendous catch, a great job of splitting defender Farmer. Well, he didn't know that he was a good cold weather player until today. Isn't that just his second reception as yep. a starter? Yep. And we've got an injury. Appears to be Stewart, who was uh, involved in that play, along with Fernando Bryant. We've got to the final week of the National Football League season coming up and a number of still uh, unanswered questions about the playoffs. More uncertainty this year than in recent memory. Jacksonville against the Giants. That's a NFL special edition on CBS. It all begins with the NFL today at 1130 Eastern time. Jim Nance and the entire crew, Mike, Craig, Randy Cross, Jerry Glanville, reports from Marcus Allen. All of that, an NFL special here on CBS Sports next Saturday. That was Cincinnati's third longest pass of the season, the 37-yard hookup. And on first down, Mitchell again with plenty of time. There's Farmer. If you're playing on a cow pasture, a farmer does just right. <laughs> you figure he's going to have some excellence, right? Fitting that a farmer should be at home in these conditions. Great job. The high snap. Mitchell pulls it home, finds Farmer on the little crossing pattern, and watch him tuck the ball away. Puts it in that other arm away from the defender. Great job on the run. Farmer getting vertical. Three catches only, but for 74 yards, you talk about a big producer. Well, they may have found a, a little chemistry here between Mitchell and Farmer at just the right time. Looking this time for Warren. Boy, he almost reeled that in inside double coverage. Jason Kraft was a young man that they wanted to work on today, two years out of Colorado State, and seeing some playing time. Young man was tested there by Warren. The thing you like about him, he goes up and tries to grab this ball, does Warwick at its highest point. 
almost came away with a great play. How many times in his co college career have we seen this guy go up and make something out of nothing on plays look an awful lot like that? I, I guarantee you, Timmy, they're going to try to get the ball to him at least two more times in this series. Second down and ten. Ron Dugans in motion and in the game. They come back the other way to Bataglia. And uh, they rule it incomplete. And that was a big hit by Donovan Darius. That was his specialty at Syracuse, and it is again as a professional. His ability to uh, come up and pop you, particularly in these nickel and dime packages that have been run uh, during this recent run by Jacksonville. His play, along with Mike Logan, is very important. This young man is. Uh, so diversified that he also was the deep snapper when he was in college. He was that valuable uh, when uh, he was playing back at the Carrier Dome. Third down and ten. You look at his size, 6'1", 216. That ain't small either. That's the reason why he comes up with the kind of force that he does. Great cover skills. Bengals pick up the blitz. Farmer again. Inside the 15 to the 10. Nineteen yards the pickup. Well, Farmer once again milking this Jaguar secondary for everything they have. Does a fine job, does Mitchell, giving him the patience as that offensive line. Farmer hauls it in, turns his shoulders and gets upfield. Brian there to tackle, but not after big yardage. Two minute warning. Is sponsored by Direct TV. Direct TV. Feel the joy. And by Ramada where you can always expect our personal best service. First and goal from the 10-yard line, 14-7 Jacksonville, and premature movement by the tight end, Mark Battaglia, number 89. And uh, the Bengals shoot themselves in the foot, as they're prone to do from time to time. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 89, five-yard penalty remains first and goal. You know, and talking uh, with Dick LeBeau, and I think it is important that with all that's going gone on with this franchise, you know, the, the Corey Dillon, will he will he be re-signed? Will he become an unrestricted free agent? Uh, who's going to be your quarterback? Are you stuck with Achilles Smith, or does Scott Mitchell have a chance? I think if they could somehow pull out this win against uh, arguably the hottest team in the AFC, it would go a long way in determining his fate. No question. It speaks something of his ability to handle the adverse conditions and still perform. Here's Warwick getting it back near the original line of scrimmage at the 10-yard line. Raina Stewart wrapped him up. Well, Timmy, one of the things you look for in a coach is when there's adverse conditions, if he can coach effectively when there's tough situations going on around, that speaks to, I mean, for example, Tom Coughlin talked about how he was not the best coach when the bottom fell out of his team. He was quite candid in making that point. But Dick LeBeau, ever since taking over, has been under duress and has done a pretty decent job even though they haven't racked up a number of wins. And Mitchell is sacked behind the line of scrimmage by at least three yards. Tony Brackens and Seth Payne collaborate. Well, Bracken's now with two sacks and a forced fumble for the afternoon. Timeout coming for the Bengals, trailing by seven. Just one and change left. Decides to tuck it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. an elusive quarterback whether in Miami or in Detroit Scott Mitchell with an opportunity and a second chance here with the Bengals and he does something that you rarely see from him to get it in Scott Mitchell certainly not the most elusive guy out there on the field but the great job Mike Logan here on the backside missed the tackle Mitchell walks into the end zone for the touchdown and you get in the red zone, I'm telling you, some of the biggest plays happen on broken plays. Neil Rackers, the all-important, the all-important extra point ties the game at 14. Wow, you know, last week, he tried a quarterback draw and was stopped at the one-yard line. Didn't quite get it in, took some heat for it. 
See, this, uh, that's the first rushing touchdown for Scott Mitchell since 1997. Well, see, this is a different type play. I mean, a quarterback sneak, particularly in these adverse conditions, isn't going to get anything done. What you need to do is make the defenders make a move in adverse conditions with the soil. This is what he's got out of that play. Uh, and you can see what it means. And again, credit Dick LeBeau and the Bengals. Kenny Anderson pretty excited about it as well. This, this is not the kind of reaction or the kind of pause that you generally see from a 3-11 team. Yeah, but that this team has not given up yet, and that's the thing that I like about him. Dick DeVoe, this guy's a Civil War historian. He understands strategy, and he does not quit. He will not die. He's been lobbying for the head coaching position on a permanent basis. Everyone knows he wants it. His players are supporting him. And when you see a quarterback who's not known, as you pointed out, for the great mobility, it's encouraging and exciting to see that. By the way, in that drive, 79 yards of it courtesy farmer from mitchell those two hooking up on three occasions led to the touchdown to tie this game and could take it into overtime if jacksonville is stopped here and then coming into this game if you said mitchell and farmer were going to play heavily in the winning this contest maybe you've got an argument with mitchell since he touches the ball on every play but farmer getting his first start at the wide receiver's position with dukas being set down unlikely and that uh, field goal try and the bad field conditions that was missed by Hollis earlier, very important now, looms largely in the outcome. Shiron Stiff, they got the ball. I back. think he fumbled it at the 35 yard line, and Cincinnati says they have it. And they do. It's coming apart at the seams for Tom Coughlin's team. You see Tremaine Mack, who's also in the receiving end for Cincinnati in the same situation. He creates it and takes it away. How about that? Well, you know, the, the, the swat comes, the tomahawk comes from behind. Mack never really saw it. <laughs> Incredible. He, watch the wraparound by Tremaine Mack. Watch right there. The right arm. And you're right, Chiron Stiff did not feel him as he came through. You know, as a runner, you're looking up field, and, and it's only natural to squeeze the ball when you see someone in front of you. But if you can't see someone, maybe you loosen up a little bit and become a runner. But I'll tell you what, you've got to be alert. Your head's got to be on a swivel. First down and 10 with the ball at the 35. Cincinnati does have a timeout left, trying to win it in regulation. Farmer, well, that's four straight catches. When Mitchell's gone to the air, that's who he's found. Mike Logan makes the stop. Yeah, Danny Farmer was uh, uh, angelic earlier in the week when they had some snow. He got out on the practice field and uh, spread eagle on the field, decided to just uh, wave his arms around, and now he's uh, with an opportunity to become a true angel for the Cincinnati Bengals today. He's had an angelic performance his last two drives, that's for sure. 102 yards receiving for him as Brandon Bennett gets it ahead. And a late flag comes down. Some extracurricular activity between Battaglia and Hardy. They but mix it up. Now, Timmy, I think this is going against the Jags, which is not going to do anything good for them. Just get the ball closer, right? Personal foul. Kevin Hardy with the face mask here. And he is livid. And there's the retaliatory move. And there's that, the face mask. That did it right there. That's when the marker came down. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. 51 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. You know, and given the, given the time remaining and the location of the football, that is just a kind of mistake a veteran cannot make. No, absolutely. You hit it right on the head, Timmy. With Coughlin looking on at that, a disciplinarian, your emotions cannot affect you. And you know what? That is basically choking. When the conditions and circumstances impact your performance, you choke. Most people look at choking as just the opposite of that, but you just witnessed it. They can get a first down without a touchdown, and they're going to keep it on the ground and in the middle of the field with Corey Dillon. But basically ensure overtime at least and try to give Neil Rackers the best possible angle for the conceivable winning field goal. 
And again, a reminder, we wouldn't be in this situation. They would be actually be playing for a tie were it not for this slip on that turf at the other end of the field moments ago. Dylan again wants to keep it between the hashes. Gary Walker brings him down. And they'll let the clock wind down and take that final timeout. Only one left. And they'll use it right here to bring Rackers out for the winning field goal try. Yeah, you, you have to want <laughs> if you're Rackers, you probably want to be practicing into the net. And the worst, but you know, just chew up the, the ground a little bit before you plant your foot <laughs> to prepare yourself for what's to come. They should, should have some of those big offensive linemen out there pack that, that dirt down around where the ball is going to be placed. And again, uh, we talked about it. We, we talked about the fact that Jacksonville would have a complaint that they could wage with regard to field conditions. And after this happened, this would have given them a 17 to 7 lead. This is a field goal kicker that was 23 of 24 coming into today's game. It was a 28 yard try, and he clearly slipped on that really terrible turn. And historically, had, had performed well when he had the opportunity in adverse conditions in 96 in postseason play. You know, he hit uh, eight field goals in that three game stretch. Impressive guy that took him all the way, one play away from the Super Bowl. This will be Neil Racker's first ever game winning kick if he makes it out of the hold of Tolk. And with two timeouts remaining, no surprise that Jacksonville will use one of them here. It will be a 27 yard try when it happens. The other thing that's amazing about this game, this score. Look back at all of the the only break that Cincinnati got today was the miss. The fact that Hollis with his plant foot could not hold ground and kick that field goal. Everything else, every other call has gone Jacksonville's way today. Yeah, we go back to Big LeBeau on the sideline pleading this case after the fourth call yeah. was made that went against him today. I mean, they had the touchdown that was questionable. They had the fumbles. I mean, all those issues playing against this Bengal team, which this season certainly has underachieved. Uh, They've had changeovers and coaches quarterback situations all this uncertainty Tim. final home game of the year for Cincinnati LeBeau looking for his fourth as head coach Rackers looking for his first ever winning field goal and he has got it that are here or for the team or for the head football coach that the playoffs were not in the offing. This is a very important win for Dick LeBeau and the rest of his fingers. Boy, his ball club laid it on the line, Timmy. There was really on the outside no reason why this team should have played at the level that they played today. I mean, for all intents and purposes, long since eliminated from the playoffs today, Dick LeBeau gets a reprieve. And the snap was perfect. The hold excellent. And Rackers splits the uprights. To give that man, Dick LeBeau, at 63 years young, an opportunity to smile. His fourth victory, four and eight since taking over for Bruce Cosley. Our final score, 17-14, Cincinnati. Here to a four and 12 on the campaign. Jacksonville with yet a game in front of them. Next week against uh, an outstanding football team, that being the Giants, they fall to 7-8. and eight. And again, a remarkable performance by the Bengals coming from behind. Turnovers were a key. One long drive. Uh, certainly Danny Farmer on the receiving end from uh, Scott Mitchell leading to the all-important game-winning field goal. I think mentally staying in it for Dick LeBeau's crew was the key because, you know, you go through the course of this game here, so many calls go against you, and then your kicker comes in to save the day for you in the end. For all intent and purpose, this game 
could have gone the opposite way. Oh, yeah. I mean, and the missed field goal on the other side for Hollis when he slipped with his plant foot, his try was only from 28 yards. Truly, the turf was a factor, as we had mentioned at the top of the game. It certainly was at the end. The Bengals win it by a final score of 17-14 for Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando saying so long from Paul Brown Stadium. 17-14, the final coming up next. The NFL on CBS continues. Indianapolis takes on Miami. You have been watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 30. Thank you for watching this presentation of the National Football League on CBS. The Jaguars lost in the snow and the mud 17 to 14. Chiron Stiff's fumble on a late kickoff return led to this Neil Racker field goal on the last play of the game. The Jaguars' loss puts their record back to 7 and 8. The Jaguars will try to finish the season with a win as they visit the New York Giants next Saturday here on Channel 4. We'll have a complete wrap up of today's game tonight on First Four Sports. They beat Jacksonville. 27 yard field goal as time expired. New England and Buffalo came down on a field goal. Good.